By way of introduction, I want to start with this rather dense quote from um, the book Knowing and the Known, uh, which was written by John Dewey and Arthur Bentley in 1949. The transactional is, in fact, that point of view which systematically proceeds upon the ground that knowing is cooperative and as such is integral with communication. It demands that statements be made as descriptions of events in terms of durations in time and areas in space. It excludes assertions of fixity and attempts to impose them. It installs openness and flexibility in the very process of knowing. So the book outlines the fundamentals of transactionalism, uh, a method of inquiry that emphasizes the collective and transactional nature of knowledge. The term itself might sound a bit strange to us um, in this context, but of course the idea is not new from the perspective of today, um, given the history of um, structuralist and post-structuralist interventions through the second half of the 20th century. Nonetheless, as um, this line of thought belonging to a particular historical moment, I do find it as a very good departure point for our discussions today. So for Dewey, the transactional was understood as an epistemological shift from the earlier interactional mode of uh, knowledge presentation. In the interactional presentation, persons, objects, um, or ideas were understood as operating one upon another, while the transactional method considers every aspect of existence both extensionally and durationally. In other words, transactionalism challenges the notion of fixed causality, instead emphasizing a systematic approach to inquiry that locates its subject on the ever-dynamic nexus of space and time. This study day brings together scholars who think about American art in the 1940s in similar terms, or as Dewey would put it, in terms of duration in time and areas in space. The presentations we'll hear today, as well as the keynote we heard yesterday, complicate the divide between the pre-1945 and post-1945 art history, as well as between the histories of World War II and the Cold War. Similarly, these presentations probe the categories of local, regional, international, and global, while thinking through various networks of collaboration, circulation, and exchange, which characterized artistic production in the United States during the decade. And speaking of the cooperative nature of knowledge, this study day would not be possible without the generous support from the LARCA uh, research group at Université Paris Diderot and HAR research group at Université Paris Nanterre, as well as from the uh, Fondation de l'Université Paris Nanterre and the Terra Foundation for American Art. Although this event is a wonderful product of institutional collaboration, it was made possible through the tireless work of numerous individuals who have helped with different stages of event preparation. In particular, I would like to thank Cecil Whiting, not only for her wonderful keynote yesterday, but also for all her help and support um, during the planning of this event. And at Université Paris-Nanterre, I want to especially thank Aurélie Pitiot, Ségolène Le Man, Rémi Labrousse, Thierry Dufresne, Dominique Lin, and Alessandra Cava. I'm also really grateful to our intern, Julia Chabrat, um, who is a master's student at the Université Paris du Droit, oh, sorry, Université Paris-Nanterre, um, for all her hard work, time, and energy. At Université Paris Diderot, I'm deeply thankful to Mark Meggs, um, Clarisse uh, Bertezen, Cécile Rodeau, and Jean-Marie Beuglin. And then the Terra Foundation, uh, I would like to thank Diego Candil, Eva Bobrovska, uh, Virli Tillmans, uh, Lindsay Hansen, and everyone at the Terra Paris office for all their tireless work. And of course, my gratitude goes to the late Francois Brunet. The study day, as well as my very fellowship, would not be possible without his commitment to advancing the study of American art in Europe. He was a remarkable and inspiring presence in personal, intellectual, and institutional terms. His generous advice informed the concept for the study day, and his tireless support made its realization possible.
And so I'm thrilled that we're able to start the event with the discussion of one of his most recent projects, the 1867 Exposi Exposition Universelle. And I'm very happy that we have two of Francois' collaborators on this project, Gary Van Zante and Clement Pond. Clement Pond is ingénieur d'études at the Paul um, which is a res uh, resource center at um, the Université Paris du Droit, dedicated to digital humanities. He was one of Francois' collaborators on the 1867 project, primarily focusing on the fusion between cartography and the displays of the fair iconography. And Gary Van Zante is a curator of architecture and design at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Museum, where he has organized and curated more than 60 exhibitions on topics that range from 16th century architectural um, graphics to contemporary design uh, practice and photography. Prior to MIT, he was head of the Southeastern Architectural Archive at Tulane University and taught in the School of Architecture's preservation program. He's the author of numerous articles and books on the urban history and photography, including a monograph on the 19th century American photographer Theodore Lilienthal, uh, which is entitled New Orleans, 1867. So please help me uh, welcome Clement Pond and Gary Van Zante. <laughs> 